All right, what is going on financial movers? Happy Tuesday, hope everything is going well for you. So today I'm gonna be talking about Netflix, ticker symbol NFLX. They just closed today's session at $549.57, uh, slightly down 0.88%, but here is where the news starts to burst out, and that is in post-market. They're currently trading at $492, down 10.4% in the post market so what just happened to netflix stock so the company just reported earnings and they actually beat eps by 78 cents and they beat on revenue but investors analysts were not very happy with what they reported in terms of subscriber addition. So the company did report that they added 3.98 million global streaming net additions, uh, but that was short of guidance of where that was supposed to come in at 6 million. So down by about 2 million, uh, they missed guidance by about 2 million added subscribers. And then for the current quarter, coming up in this next quarter, they only planned to add 1 million subscribers and the consensus was that it would be about 4 million so really under the the mark the consensus mark right there so is the company just kind of pulling those numbers down the company said we believe paid memberships growth slowed due to the big COVID-19 pull forward in 2020 and they also said that in the short term there is some uncertainty from COVID-19 but in the long term the rise of streaming to replace linear TV around the world is clearly the trend which I do pretty much agree with and probably everybody else now uh, is this just a short-term problem because if so this could be a really good buying opportunity in Netflix stock if it keeps to dipping or even where it's dipped to right now and not all is doom and gloom they also did approve a repurchase of up to five billion dollars in shares and they expect that buyback program to begin this quarter so keep that in the back of your mind we get over to the technical charts because that's definitely something to remember. So I'm going to break down the numbers over at Netflix, get into those technical charts and give you some levels, some key levels that I really think could be hit and bought up at on support on Netflix stock. So before I get started, I'm going to ask you to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button for me so you never miss out on another analysis. And let's get started with the numbers at Netflix. So Netflix, I, before before I get into their revenues, I do want to point out that while they were not adding as many subscribers as was planned, they are still increasing revenue. And to give you a regional breakdown, in Q1 2020, they're bringing in $2.7 billion in revenue. Just this Q1 2021 that they reported, they're bringing in $3.1 billion, and that is in the United States and Canada. So they're still bringing in a lot more revenue in North America. They are increasing revenues in Europe and the Middle East, going from $1.7 up to $2.3 billion. So those quarter ended in Latin America from 793 million up to 837 million and then in Asia and the Pacific going from 484 million in revenue up to 762 million so almost getting up to that doubling point so the revenues are still coming in and the regional breakdowns pretty strong it's just that net new subscribers uh, you know, weren't getting added at rates that analysts wanted, investors wanted, but I wouldn't be surprised to actually watch that be a continued trend and then just ha have Netflix raise the subscription price as time goes on and then still get increased revenues in those regions. But we will see if that is what occurs. So uh, breaking down these consolidated statements of operations, they got their three months ended coming in, March 31st over 2021, over March 31st, 2020, and they even have a March, uh, December 31st, 2020 coming in as well in the middle. So we can just look quarter over quarter, not year over year. So uh, total revenues coming in at $7.1 billion, increasing up from $6.6 .6 billion in December of last year, and then increasing up dramatically from March 31st, 2020 from $5.7 billion. So a nice 24% increase in revenues. Now, cost of revenues, this is really spectacular to see. They increased 
total revenues up $7.1 billion from $6.6 billion from Q4 2020 to Q1 2021. But check this out, cost of revenues were decreased from $4.1 billion to $3.8 billion from last quarter to this quarter. So increased revenues and then we're able to cut the cost of revenues. That is really solid management over there. The company's also been able to cut their marketing from $762 million down to $512 million. A lot of people know what Netflix is, so maybe they aren't having to market as much as they were before. That'll be interesting to see where those numbers keep going. Uh, the company does have general administrative. They got to pay their people, R&D, et cetera. So total operating income coming in, tremendously higher this quarter at $1.9 billion, up from $954 million in Q4 2020 and up from $958 million in Q1 2021. So that is really solid management over at Netflix. And this is what I like to see. And I do think Netflix is a very long-term player in streaming uh, and replacing television. So even if they're not getting millions of net new subscribers, they're definitely doing really well in their management of increasing revenues and cutting costs. Okay, so net income coming in at Netflix at $1.7 billion, up from $542.1 million just last quarter and from $709 million from March 31st, 2020. So a huge increase in net income. And also check this out. They're earning $3.85 per share share right now up from $1.23 just last quarter and up from $1.61 in Q1 2020. But the company isn't even paying any type of dividend rate at all. They have no yield. They're not paying anything. So all the money that they're making for their EPS is just getting funneled back into the company and they can either create a dividend in the future or do exactly what they just announced. And that is approving a repurchase share program of $5 billion in shares. Okay. So they're rewarding investors by repurchasing shares back and they have a lot more room to be able to do that going into the future. Now, getting down to the balance sheet is Netflix healthy on the balance sheet. So they had their uh, Q1 2021 coming in over December 31st, 2020. So over Q4 of last year, they had cash and cash equivalent staying steady on the balance sheet at $8.4 billion. Uh, total current assets coming in at $10.1 billion, up from $9.7 billion. And so total current assets at $10.1 billion, total current liabilities at $7.9 billion, staying pretty flat from last quarter from $7.8 billion. So looking good right there, total current assets outpacing those total current liabilities. Now, take a look at this. They do have a long-term debt on the balance sheet, and the company did say they expect to just maintain this, and it's at $14.8 billion, down a billion from $15.8 billion. But they, they, they got a lot of cash, okay? They got $8.4 billion, so can't completely cancel that out if they wanted to and that is a long-term debt uh but you know they have a lot of cash to definitely and, and a lot of assets to definitely take care of that long-term debt so not worried about that now total assets coming in at netflix at 40.1 billion dollars total liabilities at 27.2 billion dollars so assets outpacing those liabilities by about 13 billion dollars looking really good on this balance sheet looking healthy looking strong revenues coming in higher maybe not adding a lot of people, but they can just keep increasing that subscription price up and then getting that revenue up. So really solid numbers coming in, just disappointing on uh, net additions to subscribers, but this is pretty mature streaming service. So jumping over to that technical chart of Netflix, uh, I am looking out on a weekly chart and I am interested in picking up Netflix stock. So where am I interested in? Well, Netflix does have strong resistance at about $560 and just this week they were at $563. So it's actually not a huge surprise to see that they're selling off at this strong resistance and it created that resistance going back from July of last year and it's tested in July of last year, in August of last year, in October, again in January of this year year, December of last year, almost in December of last year. Uh, so it's tested it multiple times and it just tested it this week. So I'm not surprised it is now hitting off that resistance. But the next level of support it has is at $480. And that is very strong support. Just as strong as this resistance is. This has been trading a consolidation from July of last year to now. So 480 is held as strong support 
at least eight or nine times at this point. Uh, so that's kind of my first zone I would like to pick Netflix up at. If it can hit uh, to that 480 mark, then that would be a nice drop of 12% from where it closed today. And then a move down, it's already down 10%, so a move down of another 2%. So that's my first mark. Now I am gonna put on a 20 day, a 50 day, a 100 and 200 day moving average as well, and, and really give you some other support zones. So I would like it at 480. It correlates pretty solid with a 50 day moving average at $493. And then my next level where I really like Netflix is at $441. Uh, and there it had a consolidation period from April through June of last year between $397 and $440. So I do expect that consolidation period in that 440, which was prior resistance to turn into prior next support if it gets down that low. And it correlates exactly with a 100 day moving average. It's at $441. And I have a 100 day moving average as a green line on the technical chart. And going back all the way to 2013, this 100 day moving average has held as a very strong support. Anytime that Netflix comes down and taps it it's done it a couple times in the past eight years, and it always holds this pretty strong support. The, the worst support it ever had was in September of 2019. It fell below it for a couple of weeks, and then it got picked back up and then just went right on uh, upward to making big gains. So really looking at 480, and then I'm looking at 440. Those are my two levels I would really like to pick Netflix up at. And do not forget, they are doing this $5 billion share buyback, and they expect to do it beginning in this quarter. So if they do a big dip on their stock, they're at least gonna be buying it and giving the stock support. They have $5 billion to throw at us, so do not forget that. So if you got anything out of this video, if you're bullish on Netflix, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification button for me, and see you all next analysis, financial movers.